I'm Roxy Deer from Wayne County Area Chamber of Commerce in Hype Wayne County. And you're here today to watch an, another episode of Together, a show where we interview young professionals in Wayne County to find out what they're doing. And I'm so excited about this month's episode. We have a new person in the studio, Alicia Painter from Boys and Girls Club. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, thanks for joining us. I know um, I called you and I was like, I know you have a big announcement. So let's talk a little bit about your current role, Director of Operations. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what you do at Boys and Girls Club first. Yeah, so I oversee all five of our Boys and Girls Club units um, across the county. Uh, we have over 80 different staff members and um, easily over 25 different programs that we wow. offer our kids and so many different opportunities. So I work very closely with our management team and our program staff to make sure that we're providing youth with an excellent experience after school every day. And so, I, first of all, Boys and Girls Club is doing incredible things. I feel Thank like we've you. had ribbon cuttings a lot this right. year. For the, there's been some new units opening, yeah. um, and you've been critical in that setup and that process. But there's a new exciting announcement coming out. Do you want to share that with our audience? Yeah, thank you. So starting um, on January 1st of 2022, I will be our next CEO Yay! for the Boys and Girls Clubs <laughs> of Wayne County. Thank you. So I'm very, very excited for this opportunity. And you'll be replacing Bruce Daggy, yes. who's been in that role for 28 years. <laughs> Almost as long as I've been alive. Right. Is, so I think even when I was a kid, Bruce was there. Like yes. Bruce has been there for I think almost all the kids I know that went through Boys right. and Girls Club. So you've got some big shoes to fill. How yes. are you preparing? Like what is what are you feeling? Yeah, so I'm really excited that I have the opportunity to really shadow Bruce um, during these next three months before I take on the position. Um, luckily, I've been with Bruce as well for the past ten years that. I've worked as a staff member wow. um, at the Boys and Girls Club. So I have a really good pulse on um, our programming that we offer, on our staff and our team members, but really um, taking the opportunity to learn even more in the resource development, finance world, um, and learning from Bruce as much as I can um, to help with this transition. That's amazing. I love that there's like a built-in like transition period yes. for you and you're not just hitting the ground running. Right. I think that's so important for success, especially mm -hmm. in a new role where someone's had the role for so many years before. Right. right. Let's take a step back and mm -hmm. let's talk about your personal life. Tell us a little yeah. bit about who you are outside of your job. Yeah, so I actually grew up just north of Cincinnati um, in Westchester, Ohio for um, a large portion of my childhood. And then I went to Little Miami High School in Morrow, Ohio, which is a very <laughs> small town. Um, so I just say it's close to Kings Island because everybody <laughs> knows where Kings Island is. Um, and then I chose to go to Earlham College, which brought me here to Richmond, Indiana. Um, my freshman year of college at Earlham, I met my husband, um, wow. Alex, and we've been dating ever since and then got married. Um, we have three beautiful, amazing kids. Um, we have a son and twin daughters oh my goodness. Um, who all come to the club every day. <laughs> um, and so I actually started as a volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club and then um, have worked my way up into all the different positions that I've had. So I always knew that I wanted to work with kids. I always knew that um, impact and, and being able to give back to the community was very important to me. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful for the path that's led me here today. Talk a little bit about your experience being an Earlham student in the Richmond community because you embraced yeah. that and you really, like you said, you volunteered, you. you were out in the community. Talk a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so I, choosing to go to Earlham, um, I Earlham was very appealing to me in the sense that I wanted to go to a residential college. I love the idea of being so challenged academically. Um, having those small class sizes was incredibly important. And then I also played volleyball at Earlham. So volleyball was one of those huge um, reasons why I chose Earlham as well as the liberal arts education. Um, and I'm so grateful for that experience and just to be immersed in a culture of diversity 
diversity and learning how to come to consensus and <laughs> um, have an open mind and you know different perspectives. I, I'm so grateful for that. And I'm especially grateful to have the ability to be a Bonner Scholar when I was at Earlham. Yeah. Um, as a Bonner Scholar, that gave me the ability to work off campus and do my volunteer work at the Boys and Girls Club and just find that that huge passion that the Boys and Girls Club offers. That's amazing. I love when we have students from Earlham who come from out of the community. They get these experiences, they become Bonner Scholars, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're in our community, and now they're taking on leadership roles. Right. Thank Talk you. a little bit about what made you stay here? Obviously, you had the volunteer opportunities, but yeah. and Alex, your husband, is mm -hmm. obviously a reason. But yeah. talk a little bit about why you chose Wayne County to be home. Yeah, so Alex and I both just fell in love with the community here um, in Wayne County. We loved the work that we were doing um, post-graduation. He was working at the YMCA. I had found my path at the Boys and Girls Club, and we just knew um, this is where we wanted to start our family. We believe in this community. Um, Richmond, Wayne County has so many positive things to offer, and it just it worked out so well for us. Also, in a location setting, it's you know about an hour and a half from my family and then he's from Fort Wayne so it's about two hours so it was kind of the central point and That's it amazing. just made sense and it, it you know Wayne County Richmond has been so good to us and yes. we're so happy to be here. That makes my heart happy to hear too Thank because you. you both have roles in the community that are influencing so many and talk a little bit more about your professional role and how you navigated all the career changes to get to where you're going. Yeah, yeah, so starting as a volunteer, um, I had some expectations that I had to fulfill, um, and I think that just being very committed and as a student at Earlham, making sure that I showed up when I said that I would, would was very important, so I was actually named our Volunteer of the Year, wow. um, which was a really, <laughs> really neat accomplishment at the Boys and Girls Club, and then I was hired in to run our camp program um, the summer that I had graduated from Earlham. And so that kind of opened the door in a professional setting of, of being at the Boys and Girls Club. And then I was hired um, very quickly as our program director. And then after about a year as our unit director overseeing our Jeffers unit. And then um, a couple years after that, our senior unit director, so assisting with our other units as mm -hmm. well. Um, and then for just a li little over this past year, I have been our director of operations. So I've really, what I, what what I love about the Boys and Girls Club and what I tell people a lot is we have a large ladder that you can climb up and if you work hard and you you know really care about the quality of the work that you're doing there's so many different opportunities for you. That's incredible like I didn't even realize there were so many career options yeah, inside right. Boys and Girls Club and this past year we've cut ribbons on two new units. Yes. <laughs> Talk about that. Like, that's yes. wild to me. Yeah. And so I, I am so proud of this. Our staff has worked so hard to make this happen. Um, our first bank unit was something that we have been looking at doing for so many years. And um, being um, in the north side of Richmond is a very needed uh, location for us to have Boys and Girls Club programming. So that was a huge success. The the building, the club looks wonderful. Wonderful. We um, we're serving about 120 kids wow. a day, um, and that number just grows every month, which is great to see. And then being able to be finally in the Western Wayne community as well, yeah. um, and just the community support that we've received of being out in in that community has been wonderful. Um, that club just so we opened that up in mid August, and we just now hit 100 members who have registered. To wow, be out there, so. that's a big thing for that community. Because when you go to Western Wayne, there are there are things to do, but there's not a lot for kids after school. Right. And so, to see students u utilizing Boys and Girls Club right. and the opportunities that you're providing those students, yeah. like the, I, just what are some of the opportunities? I know, but yeah, for our audience. yeah. So every day after school, kids come into our club, and we are very big on open programming. So kids get to pick and choose where they want to go, which is very important to us because they've already had that incredibly structured day at school of this is what we need to do: do this, do that. Um, so when they come into any of our clubs, they get to choose what they do. Um, some of those options, depending on the club, is the games room, which is a large area where kids can play. It has foosball, carpet ball 
pickleball, tabletop games, all different um, activities for kids. We also have gyms at all of our clubs where they can focus on you know living that healthy lifestyle that we want them to have. Um, we have computer labs. We have what we call our senior games room, so an area for the older kids to go okay. to. Um, kind of the same idea that we have in a games room, but only for older kids. We also have what we call a cadet room, which is only for younger kids. That's so awesome. trying to um, base our areas based on the age of kids. We have art rooms um, at both First Bank and at our Jeffers unit. We have a branch of the Morrison Reeves Library, which our members absolutely love, That's and we awesome. love the partnership we have with them. Kids can come in and read a book. They also can sign up for a library card and check those books out, wow. um, which is really neat for them. And then um, one of the biggest things we have to offer is our classroom. So every day after school, kids can get help with their homework. As a working parent, I am so grateful for that <laughs> sure. because it's hard to, okay, now we have, you know, 20 minutes worth of homework after this whole long day that we've had. Um, so helping kids with homework and so many different programs that fall under that. And then another um, opportunity that we offer every day is one-on-one -on -one tutoring with a certified teacher. So wow. that's really good to be able to offer that and one of the mo one of the reasons why I'm most proud to work at the Boys and Girls Club is everything I just said costs $15 a year to be a member of the That's Boys and incredible. Girls Club. So it really fills, uh, fulfills the need um, to provide a very affordable, safe place for kids to go after school where they have all these different opportunities to, to grow in our clubs. That's amazing. So Thank let's you. jump now and talk about what it's like to be a young professional because yeah. a lot of times, I know I feel this, that I walk into a room and I'm the youngest person mm -hmm. or I look like the youngest person and there's it's, sometimes that's a struggle have you felt that struggle before yes yes I definitely have <laughs> um, so when I first started in the program director role I was 22 years old oh my goodness. and 22 years old leading a team of about 20 staff members wow. um, a, most almost all of them were older than me um, some of them probably felt like they could do the job better than me yeah. or you know at the same level as I was so you really have to prove yourself and you have to be so dedicated and persevere through those hard moments. And I, I feel like as a young professional, especially when I first started out, that the expectation is here typically, but as a young professional, the it's expectation even is even higher. Yeah. And so you really have to prove to people why, why you got that job and how well you're gonna do in that job. Um, talk a little bit about what it's like to raise a family in Wayne mm -hmm. County, because that's hard sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it is. And um, luckily it has gotten easier um, with all three of my kids being Boys and Girls Club members. But at first, especially with having twins, yeah. um, at one point we had three kids under two. Um, and Alex and I, he was at Earlham at the time and I was with the Boys and Girls Club and it was very hard. He was traveling a lot and so it was very much tag teaming of, okay, you're it. Okay, I need to do this. Um, and so we just kind of had to prioritize of what, what was most important. Um, but now I, and that's another, another reason why I love the Boys and Girls Club is I know every day after school, even if I have to work late, my kids are well taken care of. They're getting that free snack that's every day. Amazing. They have the tutoring, the homework help. Um, and it just, I think it, it reminds you of how it takes a very strong village to make it happen. Yeah. And with neither of us having any family in Richmond, we've really had to rely on our workplaces to yeah. help us. Um, and I, I'm so lucky to have that with the Boys and Girls Club and just knowing that even if I do have to work late, that my kids are well taken care of. There are so many resources for families in our mm -hmm. community and Boys and Girls Club is one of the biggest ones. So I always Thank want to you. promote that. Is there any other advice or things you would tell a young professional? Yeah, I, I think the biggest piece of advice I would tell a young professional is the importance of establishing strong relationships with everyone you're leading, with everyone you work with, um, with people that you want to learn from and grow from. Um, relationships are so important and I think that we've especially learned that as we're still navigating through COVID, the importance of our happiness in a workplace and um, thinking about the relationships you have with people, but 
also the culture that you want to have in that workplace and making sure that you show up and you're ready to hit that same standard that you want the people surrounding you and on your team to um, bring to the table as well. But really focusing on relationships, humanizing the workplace and the culture that you, you want to have where you work. Well, thank you so much for joining us yeah. today. I know this is a quick interview. If people want to reach you, what's the best way? Yeah, so um, my email is apainter at bgcrichmond.org, um, or I am always at the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> You're always a um, there. Right, <laughs> yeah. So if you, our number there is 765-962-6922. But I would be happy to um, connect and, and talk about how we can better help each other. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us and stay yeah. tuned for an interview with Katie Alia. Welcome back. I'm Roxy Deer with the Wayne County Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined now with Katie Alia from Three Rivers Federal Credit Union. Welcome. Hi, Roxy. Thanks for having me. So besides your job at Three Rivers, which we'll talk about in a second, you're also the Chamber's board chair this yes. year, and this is kind of the year that hype has taken off. And you've led that. You're a young professional yourself. Talk a little bit about what it means to be on the Chamber board and what it means to be a young professional on that board. Yeah. Uh, I've been so excited to see the evolution and now um, finally getting the chamber and hype together in one organization has been great. Um, being board chair has been a wonderful experience. I've always been a big fan of the chamber, the work the chamber does in the community. So to uh, have a role and getting to see some of those um, things to come to fruition has been wonderful. Um, I love our board. We have a very active, a great working board who they all put in a lot of hours uh, for the betterment of the chamber and our community. Um, and getting hype involved has been something that was in the works for a while mm -hmm. and getting to see that happen has been so exciting. You know, the young professionals, uh, we, we talk about it a lot, but they are such an important group. Um, having the ability to work with them a lot closer um, through different opportunities with the chamber and really be a support system for that group, uh, try and do what we can to uh, support um, and bring up that next group of community leaders has yeah. been really important. I think it's important to see, for our young professionals, to see a young professional at the helm of the chamber. Because, like you said, a lot of times, um, the chamber has been, in the past, the older mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. And so to now have a younger person leading it, to have a young professional organization, there's a new energy. Yeah. There's new events coming up. We kicked off the year with Flavor of Wayne County, mm -hmm. which Three Rivers sponsor. Talk, so talk about that uh, event. Yeah, we were so thrilled to sponsor that event. Uh, you know, that that event has been happening mm -hmm. for a number of years. Um, it had been out in, at, at the mall for a long time, mm -hmm. and refreshing it the way that Hype did, being on the top of the parking garage, there was so much, there was such a cool vibe with that event. Um, it was a very unique one-of-a-kind type of evening. There was so much that people talked about that event prior to, afterwards. What I heard a lot of was um, people wanting to make sure it was going to happen again. Yes. <laughs> I heard a lot of that, like, you're doing this again next year, right? right. Um, so there are people that are already looking forward to this time next year. Um, and that was just, it was a great time to get together. Um, being out in the open air mm -hmm. at the top of the parking garage was wonderful. And the, the music, the vendors, it was such a special night. And it was the first event really after COVID that our community yeah. held as a big group. And so to see everyone come together, to see the young professionals mm -hmm. go, okay, we can actually do a big event and the community actually loves yes. us. Um, talk yeah. about a little bit about why Three Rivers wanted to be a part of that. Uh, we wanted to be a part of it for a number of reasons. One important um, piece to Three Rivers is their community give back and the community involvement. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity came up to be a part of this first time event, we're like, yeah, 
count us in. We're all on board. We like doing and being involved in um, new events, unique events, uh, but things that have an impact on the community in a way. And like you said, that was one of the first bigger events out of the COVID environment. And we knew, you know, people were really itching to be back together again. Sure. And we're really craving that um, in-person event type of thing again. So we wanted to be a part of that because it was special to have that be one of the first events out of the COVID environment for us. But it's all about community and supporting community for and Tree Rivers. not only did you sponsor, you sent volunteers out to help that day and they showed up at 8 a.m. and they were lifting tables all day. Mm -hmm. They were up. It was the hottest day we could have possibly yeah. had in May. <laughs> um, it was hotter than some of our summer days. Yes. And they were up there sweating and helping us get everything set up. Yeah. And so we cannot say thank you enough to oh. Three Rivers for your help that we day. We're happy to do it. And that's what our, our team members are always looking for ways to make an impact and be involved with groups. So when we have things like that come up, we always have people jumping up and volunteering to say, hey, I'd like to help with that. And yeah, that was a hot day, but the hype group did a wonderful job. I know that was a long day for everybody. Uh, the logistics of having an event on the top of the parking garage required a lot of planning and labor. Yeah, <laughs> and don't think about how are you going to get all of your things up there when you only have an eight foot. Yeah, you know it can only things yeah. can only be eight foot yeah. tall. So it was it was an interesting event to pull yeah. off. You guys uh, did it very well. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Katie. Talk a little bit about young professionals and how they can get involved in the chamber. What? I, you don't have to be the CEO of your company to be involved no, in the chamber. That's what I, one of the things that I love about the chamber, um, when I came back from college, I knew that I wanted to get involved in the community in some way. I just didn't really know how. And um, my job at the time was encouraging of its employees to, uh, to go out and Im get involved in some of the community groups, organizations. Um, so when I came back from college, I started showing up to some meetings here and there. And then um, some folks from the chamber were really supportive and extra encouraging of that participation, of giving of the time and talent. Um, and it was so refreshing. They wanted my input as a young professional. So that was very eye-opening to me. Um, it meant a lot that these you, you know, uh, business people who are successful, they were, they were eager to hear what I had to say when it came to community things and uh, going on. So I got tied in with the chamber early on and they were so supportive from a young professional standpoint and I'm so glad uh, and it's important to me that we continue that to, to make it known that the young professionals are so important and key uh, to the area. You know, they bring the the new ideas and they bring the energy. positive energy, yeah. all of that stuff. Um, and they've got such an important place in terms of our future and what's going to happen, yeah. you know, five, ten years down the road. So it means a lot that we always are working together and collaborating and making sure that they that we, the young professional group, has a voice and has a seat at the table. Yeah, that's, and I think that's the most important part is that the next generation of leaders mm -hmm. are getting to be trained. And Hype has recently launched a leadership academy. Mm -hmm. We have 12 new, pretty, most of them are new to Wayne County. Yes. Um, and they're going through this cohort. It's an eight week course where they really are learning the skills to be the future mm -hmm. of Wayne County. Mm -hmm. And why is the chamber so invested in the leadership component? Well, one of the big reasons is that, you know, when it, when the time comes for our, you know, current leadership or our older leadership to step down or retire or whatever may be, it's too late to, at that point, try and start yeah. training and bringing up the next class. So you've got to have that happening already so that when those transitions happen, you've got someone that can easily Fill in. move into that position and do it well and not have to go through the painful uh, learn-as-you-go <laughs> process. You yes. know, they've received <laughs> a lot of training leading up to that they will prepare them for making those decisions, um, learning how to lead a group, 
all of that that goes into play. So that's really important that we don't wait until it's the need late. is there. Yeah. yeah, that we're already prepared. So let's talk about you as a young professional. You're a mom um, and you're active in your career and in the community. How, what's it like to be a young professional in Wayne County? It's so much fun. <laughs> um, I'd be lying if I said now with the with having two kids, it, uh, it requires a lot more managing of my time than before. Uh, so I have a three, a three and a half year old and a two year old. Um, George and Nolan, they're so much fun. My husband and I have just been blessed with two of the best kids. Um, but it's a balancing act that, you know, juggling work life, social life, family life, not in that order. <laughs> um, and not allowing one of those areas to fail um, or drop the ball too severely. Yeah. Uh, so, But it's great because there's so much support here in this community um, that I have never felt like I'm on an island alone. If there comes a time when, from a chamber perspective, if I need help with something, I've got people who are willing to step up and say, hey, I can take over X, this Y, project. and Z. Yeah. Um, or I can help you um, by being present at this meeting if you can't make it. Some, you know, things like that. So I always feel well supported, even in those really stressful crunch times where I think, how am I going to do all of this? There's a great group that's there and wanting to help me and other young professionals succeed. Absolutely. There's such a great network of people mm -hmm. and it continues to grow, I think, yes. as you open the doors for opportunity. Yes. Talk a little bit about um, what are some of your favorite things to do in Wayne County? Oh man, I love the food scene. <laughs> so I love our local restaurants, um, Legends, Red Front, Old Richmond Inn, Gallows. Uh, my husband and I, when we get the chance to get a kid-free <laughs> dinner, we really look forward to going out to our local um, restaurant establishments. There are so many cool things to do, like paint the town. Yeah. Um, I love Maria's paint the town. That's such a great place for families and kids. Um, we love the nature, the outdoor um, aspect to our county. Yeah. There's so many great places to go from Hayes Arboretum Cope Center. Uh, there's never a shortage of things to do or places to go if we do have a free weekend and are looking for something to do. Well, thank you, Katie, for joining us today um, and giving us just an update on why the Chambers made this investment in young professionals. Well, happy to do it, Roxy. Thank you for supporting Hype always. Yeah.